Welcome to St. Dorothea's Gilnehirk for this service of Holy Communion on the second Sunday of the season of Lent. But first of all, I have a parish announcement to make concerning Mothering Sunday, which is this time two weeks. Unfortunately, this will be the second time that we haven't been allowed to meet. We didn't meet last year on Mothering Sunday because we had just gone into lockdown, but this is the announcement for this year. We are hoping to deliver a small plant to all mothers in the parish on Mothering Sunday. If anyone is able to help to deliver these, they can be collected from Sheena Johnson at St. Dorothea's Church on Saturday the 13th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. This is the end of the announcement. And now we begin our service, and we begin with the sentence appropriate for the season of Lent. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. We take a moment for reflection, asking God's forgiveness on anything that we would wish to confess before him. And so we confess, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, during the season of Lent, it is traditional to leave out the Gloria in excelsis, so we move to the collect of the second Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Mark in the eighth chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak in the name of Jesus, the crucified, risen, ascended, and glorified, and who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Throughout this pandemic, when most schools have been closed for long periods of time, parents have had to take on the role of being teacher, which for many has been no easy task, particularly when parents are trying to work from home as well as educate their children. In today's Gospel passage, we find Jesus the teacher. He is teaching his disciples a very different and a bitter lesson. Beforehand, his teaching was all to do with the kingdom of God, and he taught them mostly by using colorful stories which we call parables. That was fine with the disciples, but now his teaching is about his suffering, a suffering that will eventually lead to his death. Let me read again those opening words of the gospel passage. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. No sooner, of course, had he said that when Peter takes him aside and he rebukes him. No doubt Peter had only heard the bad bits, the suffering, the rejection, the death of Jesus, and that proved too much for him. It was totally unthinkable that his Christ would suffer such pain and humiliation. His mind was so numbed by that that he failed to hear the reassuring words, after three days will rise again. In other words, Jesus was trying to teach his disciples that God had it all in hand and he was in complete control of his life. And sometimes whenever we go through difficult periods in life, it's helpful 
to remember that no matter how dark the days are, God is still in control. He holds us in the palm of his hand. Let me read to you another passage of Scripture from St. John's Gospel this time, chapter 10. It's part of that wonderful passage about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. He says this in verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What a reassurance, what a comfort to us from the lips of the suffering Jesus. Yet, how often do we take fright? And do we fall apart? Yes, of course, Jesus also experienced fear, just like you and me and everyone else. But he remained calm. We only have to think of the time when he was on trial before the high chief and even before Herod himself. He knew his heavenly Father was with him, and he was with him all the way, and that he would be kept safe. Likewise, Jesus would want to teach us today to put our complete trust in our loving heavenly Father, no matter what we may be going through or how bleak the future holds for us and for our loved ones. God is on our side, God is by our side, and nothing will snatch us out of his hand. I remember in my training in theological college, rather more years than I care to think about nowadays, but there was a, a new publication, and it was entitled, Is Your God Too Small? It was a book that stirred up many thoughts and went on to ask many questions. Do we really believe that God can lead us out of our pain, our suffering, out of our grief, our depression, out of our fears or anxieties? Do we really believe it? Or do we say our prayers simply in the hope that God hears us, and that God might actually heed us. It's a bit like a child who doesn't quite know whether <clears throat> Santa exists or not, but just in case, he will hang up his stocking. Maybe we treat God a little bit like that, just in case. Or do we pour out our heart and our soul to him, as the very one who wants to help, wants to comfort, wants to heal. And as Jesus tried to reassure his disciples that he would be brought through his suffering to his glorious resurrection, so he would teach us to believe that God is in control and that God will not let us go and nothing can snatch us out of his hand. It has been said before, when in prayer, ask great things from God and expect great things from God. Amen. We turn now to our prayers. Our intercessions are on page 238, if you wish to follow them. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world, Renew then that the life of this diocese of Down and Remore. Bless David, our bishop, 
Build us up in faith and love. We pray also for John, our area dean, for Maureen, our diocesan reader, for Margaret, Petrina, and Wendy, our parish readers. We pray for all our organisations unable to meet at this time, but keep together through the internet. We pray for all leaders as they endeavour to do so. We pray for all who post on the internet prayers and reflections and other thoughts. We pray for the churches also in this Gilnaherk area. We pray that together we may show forth the gospel of the love and the suffering of the Christ who died for us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, look with favour on the world you have made. Guide the nations in the ways of justice and of peace. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, and all in authority. We ask God's blessing and guidance on our Prime Minister and the government in Westminster as they set out a map for the way forward through this pandemic. We pray for all nations of the world and for their leaders, that together we may work for the cause of justice, world peace, and security. We pray for the relief of world poverty and for an end to war and violence of any kind, particularly in our own country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, if our relationships comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work, help us to love our neighbours as ourselves, enable us to serve our families and friends, and to love one another as you love us. We ask God's blessing on the homes of this parish, especially those who live alone, those who may be self-isolating. We pray God's blessing upon all that they do. We pray for our families and for our relations. We pray for our friends and for our neighbours. We pray for the schools which serve this area. We pray for children uh, as they learn remotely. We pray for parents who help educate them. We pray for those children who will be preparing to return to school and for their teachers. We pray for all those who are studying for exams. We pray for all businesses, and especially those struggling under the current restrictions financially. We ask God's blessing on the hospitals of this city and on nursing homes, and for any parishioners who may be in nursing homes or in any of our hospitals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, relieve and protect those who are sick or suffering. Be with those who have any special need, and deliver all who know danger, violence, or oppression. We pray for all those who are still suffering from COVID, particularly those who are suffering long COVID for many months maybe to come. We pray God's strength upon them. We pray God's blessing on all in hospital and for our national health staff and for those who work in nursing homes. We pray for the vulnerable we pray for the homeless. We remember the, those who are cold or hungry. We remember those who are grieving and those who may be dying at this time. We pray for peace for them and for their families. On the parish list, we bring before God Maureen and Brian, Helen, Alistair, 
Ray and Reed, Veronica, Tom, Sarah, Geraldine, Helen, Rosie, Jean, Helen and Neil, Reggie, Margaret, Doreen, Laura, Dorothy, Suzanne, David, Rebecca, Amanda, Stephen, Ken, Norma and family, Angela, Rooney, Sam, Ellie, Mark, Dennis, Nicola and Trish. All these names have not known to us, known to God. May God bless them, guide them and strengthen them. As I place my hand on the book, may God's healing hand in Christ be upon them as we lay them at the foot of your cross where all healing is to be found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ, that we may entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, and come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in your own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. For the offertory sentence, we use the Lenten sentence. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you, all those who are watching this service today, your friends, family, and neighbours. Amen. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to overcome all our temptations. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. 
you made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and he in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. May the body of Christ keep us all in eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us all in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Creator of heaven and earth, we thank you for these holy mysteries given us by our Lord Jesus Christ, by which we receive your grace and are assured of your love, which is through him now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, and to take up your cross and follow him. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.